Hi everybody, welcome and welcome back to our channel. If you are new here and enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe to our channel and click that little bell, that way you never miss a notification. Today we are doing basically a response video. Um, we watched one of Dissociated's uh, YouTube videos and really related to it. Um, and now this is basically us just responding to it. Um, so, of course, we felt like it was important to start this off by saying we did use select footage from Dissociated's video about persecutors targeting littles. We don't own any of that content and we do link the full video in the description below. So if you guys want to go and watch Dissociated's full video, feel free to follow that link and check it out. Hi, quick note before the video starts, big trigger warning for this video, we're going to be talking about persecutory behaviour um, targeting littles, so young alters. We're going to mention child abuse, no details, but it is discussed, but yes, just please have a heads up. Um, from this point on, please be responsible for your own triggers and just be aware that this might be a heavier video for some of you. The reason that we're making a video responding to theirs is because we related to some of the information that they shared and wanted to share some of our own experiences and opinions on the topic while also crediting Dissociated for bringing this topic to light. Hello everybody, welcome back to Dissociated. This is Kaya. Um, I just wanted to like have a chat today about something I had a talk with about one of my system friends and they were saying that they didn't understand why alters in systems sometimes are nasty to younger alters. I think that a lot of people who aren't familiar with DID or maybe just don't know a lot about DID assume that all littles are sort of like the ideal child of an alter that exists to relive the childhood that was lost out on due to trauma, which is why the DID developed, right? But littles can be any other kind of job. Like you can be a little and still be a protector, or you can be a little and still be a persecutor. There's loads of different kinds of littles, and I do want to, you know, make sure that everyone understands littles aren't, it's not a DDLG thing, it's not a kink thing, it's not an intentional thing, it is part of dissociative identity disorder where the brain has dissociated part of the identity, fragmented part of the identity, to contain an experience or a need or a role to help that child survive. So some child alters do hold either the memories or the joy or the freedom that children of that age should have had that the individual with DID didn't get to have. But child alters can also be trauma holders. They could be representative of how the person felt at that time, like a child, like they were being treated like a child or like they didn't have control, that they were being overruled, that they were naive, innocent, or perhaps had their innocence taken from them, for example. So we have a few littles who are also persecutors in our system. We have only one little who is a little and a sexual alter that we know of. Um, we have littles who are also A and P's, meaning that they don't have any trauma memories. Um, and we have at least one little in the system that we are aware of that is also a protector, like an emotional protector. Um, and of course we have littles who are trauma holders. So why would alters in systems sometimes be cruel to children in the system? What reason would a system have to pick on or even have a specific persecutor for some system little? Some alters may hold a grudge against younger parts. Those parts may be, for example, a part that was out the most often when the body was a child. So it could have been the host at that time period. The host is just an alter who fronts the most often. Obviously, if you have DID, there are parts, alters that will be split off or are fragmented or dissociated otherwise from the from the brain to create separate 
alters alternate states of identity and that usually happens when there has been a particular traumatic event or very very high stress or otherwise something that the brain is unable to deal with so they need to make a new alter a new fragmentation to be able to hold either that memory or that possesses the abilities the skills needed to survive that situation so if a child that is the child alter goes through something extremely traumatic let's say they were abused then an altar that splits off or is otherwise formed because of the young alter experiencing that abuse may blame that little they may feel like if that little that alter had experienced the abuse in a different way if they had escaped the abuse if they had otherwise dealt with the abuse better then that other alter wouldn't have had to exist in the first place they wouldn't have had to experience that pain or that abuse for them they wouldn't have to hold the agony of those trauma memories or even step in for other experiences that are similar to the original in our system, like, when it comes to alters holding grudges and alters blaming, like, littles and other alters for the trauma that happened to us, um, we've experienced this a lot. And, like, the past several months in therapy, we've been, you know, really discussing, you know, what are the motives behind the negative actions that an alter might take, whether that's on the body itself or internally towards other alters um and a lot of it is blame and shame and anger and pain um and basically alters holding grudges and when we watched this segment in dissociative's video it really like hit us hard because that's literally what we've realized over the past couple of months um working with our therapist um so some of her alters, uh, like Comet, Bryce, Mayday, and Ciel, um, Comet and Bryce um, both hold a lot of anger, and so does Ciel. But Ciel is kind of like a protector and a persecutor. Like he's had his his points where he's he's basically both. Um, and Mayday is one of the littles who is a persecutor. Um, but with all that, we've you know noticed um, a lot of anger and pain and uh, blaming others for what happened. So we definitely related to that. And it's hard for me to think right now of um, just in general like a, a situation that happened. The only one that I can really think of currently um, is a, a situation with Bryce and like he would intentionally go after mostly the younger parts and those who were on a physical level like weaker than him and when it came to like him trying to hurt anyone that could actually defend themselves he'd pretty much lose that fight um which basically showed us that you know he wasn't as as strong or as um bad as he made himself out to be he did have points where he couldn't fight back himself either so there are alters who are disruptive or cruel to younger alters and systems not necessarily in every system but it's not unusual some littles even have their own persecutors. So alters that exist to harass, upset, threaten, or harm younger alters. This could be in the inner world or the outer world that the harm is being caused. So again, a lot of people that we've come across seem to think that the inner world is this you know, ideal place for the brain to escape to, like a little meditation haven. Um, for some people, yes. For some DID systems, yes. But it's generally a way, from our understanding, for those different parts of the brain to communicate with each other, to process that trauma, to be able to interact in an environment where they're still dissociated from each other in terms of how the brain is functioning. 
not all alters will be able to talk to each other in the headspace. They might not be able to see each other, there may be individual areas of the inner world that only certain alters can access, etc, etc. So that also means that alters can hurt each other in the inner world. Alters can fight. Alters can physically harm each other um, or emotionally harm each other. Some littles have a persecutor alter who's original reason for existing was to hurt that alter. Whether that was because the brain felt so ashamed at having experienced this trauma that it developed an alter to take it out on the little, or it could be an interject of an abuser who copies the actions or the abuse that the external person was doing to that little, and they then reenact it inside the inner world. It could be a way to force that altar to stay quiet. Um, the altar could make the little feel very, very ashamed of what happened to them. Very much like it was their fault. Like they mustn't say anything. They must be quiet or perhaps they will threaten them or maybe they would tell them that something bad would happen to them or people they love if they speak out about the experience. And this is another way that abusers can quite literally get into your head as a child to stop the child from speaking out about the abuse or in some cases even remembering the abuse. So with trauma reenactment, we've experienced that a lot. Um, one that I can talk about that I'm aware of um, is when CL kind of went off the deep end and he went from being basically a protector to being a full-blown persecutor and started reenacting the trauma that was done to him and forcing that on others. So basically switching his roles from perceiving himself as a victim of the trauma to perceiving himself as the person who was dealing the trauma, basically as the abuser. That's happened a couple of times with CL. Um, and it's also kind of happened with like one other, but she's not really a persecutor anymore. So that's like a whole different scenario. Um, but the trauma reenactment we can definitely relate to that does happen in systems that has, at least for us it's happened multiple times. Another thing that we related to was that like an inner world is not the perfect place. And yeah, just like Associate did said, you know, for some systems it is, um, but at least in our case, it's not always pretty. Um, there's war, there's sickness, there's conflicts, there's loss, there's um, a lot of things that happen in our inner world that aren't pleasant and that we always don't, you know, we don't always want to um, be there and experience that. You know, there's points where others are like, please let me front and get away from all this crap inside, you know, so it's definitely not always pleasant 100% of the time. Um, we do have sections of inner world that's like all bad stuff. And then other sections of the inner world that's like safe and calm and peaceful. So for us, it's like a little bit of both. So there's a number of reasons why alters might target littles. Could be due to their own shame, their own anger, and their own suffering and needing to take it out on somebody or it could be for a more or it could be for a more practical reason like trying to keep that altar quiet about the abuse they suffered that could be because they were told to because they were reenacting abuse or trauma caused by somebody external who told them the same thing or it could be out of fear to keep their system safe. Perhaps they know that at this time it is not safe for the rest of the system to know about this abuse or for external people to know about this abuse. A lot of the time alters will hold one specific genre or just one specific trauma memory and not necessarily be aware of 
other trauma that has happened. While and also who has experienced one kind of abuse might know that that abuse is not happening anymore and feel like it's safe to speak out, might not know that there is a whole other kind of abuse or trauma that's going on that makes it absolutely not safe to speak out about that. That could even be being performed by the same people or <laughs> happening in a very different time of life that could even be being performed by the same people or it could be happening at a completely different time of life, a completely different place. Um, people might not be involved full stop, could be a natural disaster, could be medical trauma, could be anything. When it comes to like the shame, anger and suffering and then taking all that out on others, uh, we've seen that, we've witnessed that with the CL. He like, what we're learning about him when it comes to like therapy and stuff um he has he has all this anger in him and all that is basically directing directly to pain and um oh what's the word i can't think of the word um pain and uh not regret guilt there we go um basically feeling like a failure because he wasn't strong enough back then to keep us safe yet now he is um there's points where all that you know from within him basically comes out and he takes it out on others very rarely does he take it out on himself um but that has happened too um but like when something sets him off he's basically claimed you know um it's like a fight within himself there's him and then there's this what he calls a beast or a thing or you know something that's not him and what that is is basically anger it's all those really strong negative emotions that he feels and um when he gets set off or triggered it's like a, a fight goes on and he has to make a choice he can either you know give in to that and take all those negative emotions and you know harm others or he cannot you know give into that and he can process it in his own way which is um something he hasn't really talked about with like anyone even not even with our therapist as far as we know so we don't really know what he does when it comes to not choosing that we don't know we don't know what he does he literally kind of he retreats within himself. He literally basically disappears for a minute when he wants to be alone and processing things. That's when we know, you know, hey, he's going through something right now. So he's either going to come out of it okay or he's going to come out of it and we're all going to suffer for it. So, yeah, we definitely relate to that. Um, with the keeping quiet part, like, alters who are hurting other alters to make them not speak out about things that happen to them uh with us personally we can relate to that because of bryce bryce would target um alters who were weaker than him on a physical level and he would target the kids and one of the things he always tried to um force basically was if you if you tell any of the protectors where i'm hiding or anything like that you know like if you if you tell I will come back and I will hurt you worse. That's basically what he would um, go on about with them and to taunt them and threaten them. Um, with the thing about uh, not all the altars holding the same or the full memory, we 100% back this because we've literally been going through this in therapy recently. Um, well, over the past like three or four months now. Um, so when we're working through a trauma memory in therapy, there's always um, missing pieces that we learn as we go along with sharing the memory. And at the end of the session, our therapist would always make sure, you know, like either we write it down or we like say it out loud and hope that other alters inside can hear it. Um, but we always try to ask, is there anyone who holds information about this memory and if you do, are you willing to share that? And if you are willing to share that, how? Like, we used to have, we don't have it anymore because of a personal issue, but um, we used to have a trauma therapy journal thing and um, the alters would write in it 
and if they wanted to leave their name, like they'd sign their name or whatever. Um, and sometimes they didn't, but it really helped us in therapy because if they weren't comfortable coming out in therapy, we could just be like, oh, hey, here's this. And um, we had a rule that if it was, you know, um, specifically for our therapist, that they would write that. And if it was specifically for her, we would just let her read that in therapy. And she would either write back or, um, you know, like ask, hey, is this okay for me to share in therapy and like, you know, discuss it with the client, whatever. Um, so anyway, yeah, kind of got off the track there, but linking memories and therapy is one of the things we've been going for, um, that's helping us process everything, but we have definitely learned along the way that, um, not one single alter will hold every single memory or, um, every full memory or, you know, the same thing as someone else. There could be another alter that sees it a little bit differently, basically. Generally, littles are very highly protected within systems. But there are still complicated reasons why alters may target each other. Trauma processing is not easy. It's not fun. It can be extremely dark. It's not nice to hear children screaming inside your head and not knowing why or knowing that you mustn't know why, otherwise you're gonna get triggered too. When I was Kyle, my job as primary protector partially revolved around sorting out any disputes between alters in the system. It also involved taking care of and protecting littles and being a nurturing, almost paternal, safe paternal figure to them. Call it complicated would be a massive understatement. Alters can also be persecutory at any age. There could be child alters who hold very bad experiences or just very bad feelings and take that out on other alters, whether the alters are older or younger than them. There can be child alters who are an awful lot more mature than other alters in the system who identify as older ages. There can be littles who, have, who identify as the age of like five, but have existed for 20 years and have 20 years of experiences but still are emotionally stuck at that age of five or whatever but they may be able to understand extremely complex situations um, be able to predict certain things and have experienced a lot when it comes to like what dissociated was saying where some alters you know are littles and you see them as kids but they've also been around for like 20 plus years. Um, we can definitely relate to that because um, Emma was uh, one of our littles and she was a major uh, trauma holder for us in our system. And she was three years old for like years, like a whole decade, okay? And then Izzy um, was seven for the longest time up until about three years ago, I think, three or four. Um, and then she ended up aging. Izzy aged, and Izzy went from being seven to like 19, 20. And then she aged up again and ended up being like in her like mid 20s. Um, so, uh, when it comes to like what Dissociated was saying, where they like seem more, they seem older than what they actually are, it's, it's true basically. So, like with Emma, Emma was mostly in that child state and she was stuck there. And even though she was stuck that way for years, her mindset never really um, grew from that and stayed that. But with Izzy, she was seven for years, but her mental state was like that of a, between a teenager and an adult. Like she was understanding things and comprehending things that a normal seven-year-old would not, you know, comprehend. Um, so yeah, we can definitely relate to that part. Having DID is not just having alters. It's not just having people in your head. It's not just becoming a different person. It's a trauma disorder that comes from severe and prolonged childhood trauma. 
Is possible to live with it? Yes. Some people with DID are wildly successful. But it's not a role-playing game. It's bloody scary. And it's extremely painful. And it's not something you can just take a break from when the camera isn't on. There are so many other symptoms that are involved in DID and OSDD and a hell of a lot of comorbid disorders that generally come alongside it. It's hard to talk about this kind of stuff. Because at that point, I can't go back in time and make sure that didn't happen. I can't do anything for these kids except be there and help them work it through. I can't take away the memories of what happened to them. I can't make it stop if they're screaming. All I can do is be with them. And promise to myself and my system that that will never happen again. And that's my job. That's all of our job. So please, if you're interacting with somebody who's a system, don't immediately jump to, oh, it's like split, or, oh, you have different people in your head. Who's the fun one? Who's the one who's most likely to flirt with me? Who, who's gonna be my favorite? Don't pity us either, because systems have survived a fuck ton in order to still be here. The idea is a defence mechanism to survive things that some people wouldn't survive. Systems are capable. They have a lot on their shoulders, but they're capable. That's all that we could really, you know, like, contribute with when it came to, like, responding to this video that Dissociated put up. Um, that's all that we could really think of. Um, but yeah, we were actually really thankful that Dissociated, you know, like, brought this topic to light because who knows if they didn't, you know, maybe, like, we wouldn't be making this video today. We wouldn't be, you know, talking about how this affects our system and that, you know, it is a serious thing. It happens with DID and it's, it is so difficult to deal with. Um, it's, it doesn't make anything any easier. And DID is obviously not an easy thing to live with as it is. So, you know, like, you know, bad things happening inside. Um, add on to that extra stress, causes re-traumatization, makes, you know, triggers more severe, makes like the flashbacks and stuff, like the PTSD episodes, like more intense because things inside aren't the greatest. Usually if things inside aren't the greatest, things outside probably aren't the greatest either. So it's like double stress and double trauma events and double everything. And it's just, it's not fun. It is, it's really stressful. It's kind of annoying sometimes. And it's just, it's really unpleasant. Um, so we're really grateful for Dissociated for, you know, bringing that topic out and actually, you know, going into it and, you know, not holding anything back. Very appreciative. Um, we hope you guys liked our video too, um, and yeah, if you enjoy our content, remember to subscribe, hit the like button, um, and we will see you all next time. Bye everybody!